clap. Let's give it a go. There we yeah. go. One more time, though. If you could clap someone, please. It needs to be much louder. Yeah, that's the one. But I need one clap, solidly, please. Okay. <laughs> that's going to be a nightmare in post. Do it again, do it again. That's her best Perfect. trick. Perfect, there we go. So I had some ideas for different characters based on, if I'm honest, people that I've met in real life. <laughs> and um, I was just really interested in seeing how I could get these very different women to bump into each other, to meet, and what kind of circumstances that might happen, and how they could learn from each other and inform each other, and also what similarities they would have that would allow them to create a friendship, basically. And how the outside world would then affect that friendship and um, influence it, either in positive or negative ways. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I always start with the characters. So it wasn't necessarily that I had an agenda and that I had a message that I wanted to deliver, but if we've learned anything from the Me Too movement, it's that everyone is affected by this. Everyone. So in writing this, that just happened naturally because it's a natural, unfortunately, horrifically unfortunately, uh, a, a very common part of people's experiences. And so if I'm honest, that bit was effortless. Um, however, once I started exploring that, I was clear that I really wanted to talk about in particular, a calibre of people that seem to be above the law and um, therefore are getting away with this and who know that they can get away with it. Um, and that was, you know, I did feel strongly about that and I do feel that you, you know, kind of got that very quickly. Yeah, and I think one of the other really interesting things about the play within this climate in the Me Too movement is that it examines different elements, different ways in which women are affected by sexual abuse. Um, I won't go into too much detail because it might give stuff away, but it's certainly very timely. And I think it does also, as you say, illustrate that everyone can be affected mm -hmm. and that normal people, for reasons beyond their own control can get dragged into something quite d ugly and quite dark um, very quickly and people that we don't necessarily expect to be affected by it as well. Yeah and also I think on the flip side what was really important for me was to have some space to explore women's sexuality free from that or separate from that and what that might look like and so trying to create a dialogue about that and what the almost alternative to this kind of very dark side of, um, well, I wouldn't even call it sex really, it's violence, mm -hmm. um, but what's the other side of that? You know, when someone is free to express themselves and explore themselves and in relation to others as well, what does that look like? Because we're still figuring that out. That's so brand new in terms mm -hmm. of a conversation. Um, so I wanted both. I, you know, I didn't want to just create a bunch of victims because the people I know that have been affected by this don't walk around just being victims. They're rediscovering themselves. They're, in fact, at the forefront of this new conversation about sexuality, and that has to be part of the conversation. I would hope that, having watched the play, people walk away with an enhanced understanding of how vulnerable women often are online and how ugly the online space can be for them. But also that we can use it in a positive way because the play is not all dark and it's not all scary. Um, so it's, I think, very much about seeing both sides, both sides of what's possible online um, and having an awareness of the levels of impact that unpleasant sides of the internet can have on people. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, delete has had a few iterations now. Yes, I got that word in. Um, <laughs> so basically, it started off uh, having a, a rehearsed reading um, at the Clear Lines Festival last year, um, which was awesome. It sold out and it got a lot of support. And from there, we've had uh, readings and performances of extracts at the Vault Festival and also at the Spotlight offices for Actor Awareness. Uh, and it's going to also be adapted for radio. And so we're now focusing on this production for the RADA Festival and we're basically taking a step into the final vision that we have for the play by using these projections, by using the sound design, by beginning to integrate the online world into the design of the play. And I think it's another step on the journey, but I don't think this is going to be the final iteration of the piece. So we're going to be inviting industry people, other venues, um, reviewers and all that kind of thing to come and see the play here with the hope that after this there'll be further runs for it as well and I think eventually we'd really like to go much deeper into the technological representations on stage so using video and using maybe live streaming and all this kind of thing to have a fully kind of integrated technological world on stage and that's something I'm super excited about for the play. Yeah. So we're thinking West End, we're thinking Broadway, then we're going to have a Hollywood adaptation. Yeah, the film's really, really important. Yeah. yeah. Is she turning into cameraman saying stop, stop it? it. <laughs> no, 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 it's stop. Oh! <laughs> Excuse me, I'm done. I guess you could ask the same question, that has, but more, what kind of inspiration did you draw from the characters when you read the script and decided to put it on the first time? None. Ha 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 ha.